Hey guys, it's Mike. It's time for another video. Uh, I will try to dive right into it. We're going to do an overview of crafting here. I will make a separate video regarding some of the special items, the special materials they can be made out of. And I'll spend some time on a different, maybe a third video, talking to you about how you might want to track and plan what you're going to do with these systems. But for now, let's just look at the crafting basics again. Um, some things may have changed since the last time I walked you through this, so I thought having the video would be handy. So you've got to have a rank and a skill to craft something. Um, I guess some, the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head that kind of requires two skills is when you're crafting wands. You need a carpenter to make the wand, and then you need an enchanter to shove the spells into it. But other than that, everything's made with a single skill. Every time you show up for a game, you're going to get um, a session point um, in several categories, non-magical, consumable, and permanent. Um, if you don't show up, you will not get them. Uh, there's got to be some reward for attendance, and that's what this is. This, as I've described to you guys, is an abstraction of time and effort. Um, since I don't really give you guys big breaks to do crafting, then this is just represents the free time that you found to get this stuff done. Sometimes it may seem really unrealistic, the number of things you churn out in a, you know, a 72-hour period, but I'm genuinely not worried about that at all. Um, everything that you construct has gold, unless it's uh, really, really cheap. You're going to have to pay some amount of gold for it. And then if it's magical and it's a permanent item, it's going to require magic capital, which we've talked about, um, and some uh, consumable items, the more powerful ones, require magical capital as well. In general, you need one session point per thousand gold in the retail price of the item, um, and this is rounded up, and now is probably a good time for me to mention something that I'm sure has entered your mind. When you are crafting something, I'm going to flip over here to the crafting cost calculator real quick. All right, so when you're crafting something that costs a thousand gold, like this plus one armor, that costs one session point, right? Because one session point per thousand gold rounded up. When you're crafting something like acid, which costs 10 gold, it also costs one non-magical session point, in this case, a non-magical session point. And it would be easy for you to look at this, because I did as well when I was designing the system, and say, hey, wait a second, the effort of one session point got me a thousand gold piece thing over here, and the effort of one session point is getting me a ten gold piece thing here. Shouldn't this make me a hundred acid rather than ten? And the answer to that is no. This is all part of that abstraction that I'm describing that I'm not trying to create a gold piece equity between session points and um, the actual cost of the item. So that, that was considered and rejected as a way of doing this because it's super complicated. So, you know, you can just factor the value of your points versus the value of just going to a vendor and buying some of this stuff as part of your overall strategy for how you leverage these resources, okay? All right, so hopefully that made some sense. Um, the gold prices that you actually have to pay for crafting something are um, half whatever it would cost retail for non-magical stuff, and then 80% of half, whatever that math comes out to, for magical items. And the other 20% of that half on the magic items gets funneled into the cost of the magical capital that you have to spend. So this is right out of the Pathfinder philosophy. Um, you know, the base cost of the item cut in half is what a crafter has to pay for things. And that's, that's generally what's going on here as well. Um, we'll go back to the crafting cost calculator later that's mentioned here, but I'm sure you guys have looked at it quite a bit already. I already said you'll get these um, non-magical consumable and permanent session points every time you showed up. show up. You can't trade them, swap them, give them to somebody else and ask them to use them in your behalf because that really undermines what they represent, right? They represent your character spending some effort. I get that you may accumulate session points that you'll never use. Um, you know, maybe you don't devote the skills to leverage certain kinds. That's, that's fine, um, but they're there if you ever need them. 
I will say, and, I, and I've seen you guys discussing this on the boards, hey, I wonder what the bottleneck is going to be for me. Am I going to run out of gold? Am I going to run out of magic capital? Am I going to run out of session points? If you ask me, I think session points are the precious thing here. You don't have any control over how much gold you get for the most part. So there's no reason to worry about that. And actually, you have a great deal of control over how much magic capital you accumulate. So I don't think that should become a problem. But you can't force more games than there are games. So that ends up being a very static resource that um, when you look at the cost of some of the items in session points, and you know that you can never reduce them below half, no matter how skilled you are. So for instance, this plus three melee weapon you want to make, even if you get very, very skilled, you're not gonna you're not gonna get this below costing you five session points. Um, you know, I, I think that's where you're gonna want to be very thoughtful about how you spend that particular resource. That's just that's just me making a prediction ahead of time. You know, it, it may all wash out differently. Um, I put a note in here that you don't actually start earning session points until you reach third level. Um, that doesn't really matter in my game right now, but if Landis adopts this system, it'll matter to him. Um, magic capital we've talked about is, is stuff that you can harvest from things that you kill or that you can devote your uh, time and money to accumulating um, during downtime. Um, talk more about that, I think, later in the document. We aren't going to track your progress as you craft stuff. All I want to know is at the end of a long rest, if you've got enough gold, enough session points, and enough magic capital to have the thing that you want, then you announce, I now have the thing that I want. So I don't care that you were working on a plus one longsword or, you know, turning your masterwork uh, Warhammer into a Master War, I mean, to a Magic Warhammer, you just need to tell me that it has happened. Um, I, I've got plenty to keep up with, so this is something you guys can keep up with. It's You just show up and hand me the, the uh, resources, and we'll mark them off the sheet that we track them on. Um, here's a list of all the skills. This is the only skills you'll ever need to craft anything, as far as I know. I guess it's possible you guys will come up with something that I can't fit into one of these categories, but um, I haven't been able to think of such a thing so far. All right, so alchemy, um, you can also call herbalism if you want to, but it's going to do the same thing no matter what you call it. And, you know, if you can think of another name for it, that's fine too, um, you know, as long as it's not ridiculous. Uh, this is a list of all the things that you can make with um alchemy and where you'll find them in the books and then you can also make troll crusher again i'm going to make a separate video about some of these special items armors for metal armor metal shields and bracers if you're not aware bracers can be enhanced the same way that armor can so um you can stack you know fire resistance or whatever into your bracers if you're the kind of person like a monk or whatever that wears bracers and not real armor and shields um calligraphy also called painting or tattoo art um, this is how you make scrolls. Uh, the prices and all that are listed out on the crafting cost calculator. Um, you can also make what I'm calling rune glyphs. Um, in Pathfinder, these things are called lesser talismans. And again, in another video, I'll go through what those are. But they're basically little prepared spells that are ready to be triggered when a certain event happens to you. Um, so for instance, when you begin falling, one that triggers feather fall might kick in. Um, I think they're pretty cool and I think they fit very well with the idea of tattoos. Um, you can also though just paint one of them on your armor or something like that if you don't actually want to get yourself a tattoo. Um, and I put miscellaneous wondrous items here just because there are some that I think would fall into this category, but that's, I probably should have put that on every category because there is such a thing as a miscellaneous wondrous item for probably carpentry and jewelry and everything else too. Carpentry covers a lot of stuff. Um, it's also Bow Bowyer and Fletcher. It's wooden armor, wooden shields, wooden melee and thrown weapons, pole arms, empty wands, and all ranged weapons and ammo. 
So uh, that's a lot of stuff. Um, but again, I, I'm really trying to balance out each of these so all of them become necessary. I think I've put a lot of stuff in here, but these aren't things that are necessarily um, top of the list popular with most people. So um, I thought putting a lot of stuff here kind of made sense. Cooking is, I think, pretty cool. It also can be called poison. And as you might guess from the names, you can use them to make food and drink that you can find at this place in the Ultimate Equipment Guide or the poisons that are also listed in the Ultimate Equipment Guide. Poisons are pretty expensive, but um, they're also really cool if you go take a look at them. And I think becoming good at using poisons might be fun. Um, you'll want to read all of the poison rules about application and poisoning yourself and all that kind of stuff. And if you can't find that, let me know and I'll link you to it. I've also created my own special meals and drinks that again, we'll talk about my special stuff in a different video. Enchanting uh, can be called just about anything you can think of. Any sort of discreet, cool craft skill that you might have that can result in you having a a palm-sized doodad in your hand is enchanting. So you can just call it enchanting if you want to, but you can also call it bone carving or glass blowing or origami or sculpting or whitlin or whatever you think of. But at the end of the day, it results in you having a little thing that works exactly like a potion. Um, same as when you're talking about calligraphy up here, I don't really care whether you paint or tattoo, your scrolls still work exactly like scrolls. Um, I did make one change to the standard potion rules and I will allow you to make potions of up to fourth level. Uh, you may know in Pathfinder, they typically stop at third level. There are some pretty strict uh, rules around what types of spells can be turned into potions. I borrow these directly from the Pathfinder rules, but I've repeated them here just so you know. Um, so generally, it can't be a range of personal. It has to target a, a specific, you know, a creature, one or more creature. And then when you drink it, you're the only target of it. So you could turn a bless spell into a potion, but it would only target you. You can't turn a fireball into a potion because it doesn't target individuals, not to mention you probably wouldn't want a potion that made you the target of a fireball. Um, wands, a lot of effort's gone into designing these rules, but basically you go out and get yourself a non-magical stick that's called a wand. It has to be crafted by a uh, talented crafter and they're pretty expensive. Then you can start using enchanting to put up to 10 spells, identical spells, into them. Again, following all the normal rules for how wands work. Um, and then once it's empty, you can load it back up with the same spell, or you can put it through a cleansing cycle to get all of the uh, old magic out of it, so you can put a new spell into it. Um, there's limitations on how many spells you can have available to you in combat. Basically, it's limited to the number of ranks you have in enchanting. And you'll want to note on your inventory sheet which ones you've flagged as being combat ready. Um, you also might want to refer to my containers videos so you can see how to use a cool bandolier to keep your wands at the ready. Um, and then speaking of that uh, cleansing cycle, so there's something I, I dubbed de-arcanification because, you know, I like my multi-syllable words. Uh, you can use de-arcanification to destroy a magic item and get magic capital out of it. Uh, sort of the neat thing about the way I've got the math working here is that if you create and then destroy an item, you'll actually get more magic capital out of it than you put into it. It's just the way the universe works. Um, and then you can also toss your dirty wands into de-arcanification cycles to cleanse them so you can put, you know, what used to have magic missile in it, now you're going to put mage armor in. You'll need to clean out that old magic missile magic before you swap them over. And again, the first time you do this, obviously I'll be walking you through it. Um, jeweler. Uh, for any wondrous items that go in the eye, headband, neck, or ring slot. Also got my um, homebrew status ring here. And then I've created a homebrew item, jewelry item called a magical holy symbol. Um, if you would like to hang a holy symbol around your neck, 
of this type, then it grants you a feat. The feats on the list are those, um, are all the channel feats, and then also spell focus and spell penetration. Um, you can swap out your bonded holy symbol at the end of a long rest. So while you're wearing whatever one is active, you gain the benefit of whatever feat is associated with it. You can't combine multiple feats into them. You can't add other bonuses on them. They take up your next slot, but it's still a cool way to get a free feat, I think. Um, leather working really includes any animal product, so bone, horn, shell, ivory. I'm sure there's other stuff I'm not thinking of. Basically, you're making armor and shields out of that, again, based in those sort of materials. It also covers your feet, hand, and wrist wondrous items. And there's a separate video regarding the masterwork containers, bandoliers, and um, belt pouches and backpacks and all that kind of stuff. So you can go watch that video if you want to know about them. But leather workers are the guys that create them. The tailor fills the belt, body, chest, head, and shoulder slots. Also does cloth armor and fine clothing. And I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some other stuff as well. Um, and then uh, the weapon crafter does metal, melee, and thrown weapons. And then also rods are under here. Um, the only rods that I've approved right now for crafting or really for existence in my world are the lesser meta magic rods. Um, if you aren't familiar with those, then basically just go out and look at all the meta magic uh, feats um, and, and you'll have a good idea of what they can do. Um, they're all listed on the crafting cost calculator as well. And some of them are for sale in Jonestown. Um, and they also serve as a light mace or a club, so a lot of the things you can do with weapons you can also do to a rod. Sorry for those pauses. I'm, I have a cold, so I keep muting myself when I, I have to cough. Uh, crafting details. These are just some, some random notes down here that I thought would, um, you know, probably answer some of your questions. Uh, first, if you want to figure out how to craft something, you go over to the crafting cost calculator. Um, if you guys want to make a copy of this sheet, all you have to do is open it up, go up to your file menu, and select make a copy. And then you'll have your own copy that you can monkey around with. I've made a tab out here called the practice sheet, where if you want to see what something is going to cost you, you can just come out here and say, okay, I want to make an item that costs 2500 uh well, this is the non-magical area, so you're probably not going to be making non-magical things that cost $2,500. Um, let's go down to the magical. Now, these do calculate differently. So if you want to make a non-magical thing that costs 10 gold, and you have one rank in your skill, and you'll have to have at least some ranks, you can see what it'll, it'll take you 5 gold and one non-magical session point. Okay? Um, if you want to make a magic item that costs, let's say, 3200 gold. You just fill that in. You say, look, I have two ranks in whatever the relevant skill is, and it'll show you your responsibility is going to be 280 gold, four magical capital, and three uh, permanent item or consumable item session points. I should have consumable here as well. Consumable and permanent uh, items math works out exactly the same way. Non-magical is a little bit different, so be sure to keep those separate if you're using this to practice. And then as many items as I could think of that you can craft are out here, but as you add things like um, John got me to approve the Ring of Sacred Mistletoe, you see I've added it out here now as well. And if you want to find out what it's going to take to craft it, you come out here and say I've got four ranks in Jeweler. And so it's going to take me four session points, 2,400 gold, and six magic capital. And you see some of these are filled in from us practicing with stuff. All right, back to the crafting document. Um, I've got a note here about weapons and armor. Uh, only masterwork items can be made magical, and you've got to, you can't skip tiers. So if you're going to make something yourself, You'll make a masterwork item, then you'll turn it into a plus one item, then you'll turn it into a plus two item, and so on like that. And when you go out here and look at these prices, the prices are the difference between the cost of a plus one item and a plus two item. So, for, for example, if you go out and look at the book, you're going to see that a plus two item costs 8,000 gold. 
but in Mike's world, you're first going to make it plus one, then you're going to make it plus two. So I'm only listing the 6,000 here that will be required to do that. You can't jump ahead. You've got to go through step by step by step. And you can't do multiple steps in a single uh, long rest session. So even if you somehow had the resources to make a plus two weapon, you would make a plus one. Then you'd wait till the next long rest to turn it into a plus two. Um, no racing ahead, although I really don't think you would ever have the resources to do that anyway. Um, not unless you just hoard them for a really long time. Um, so there's a document I've created out here called the Crafting Tables document. Anytime you make a weapon plus one, so the first time it's got that plus one and it churns out, if you want to come out here and roll on the special weapon quality table, you can. And these are just bonuses that might spontaneously appear on your weapon. There are no additional cost to you. If they show up on here, it's not more expensive to enchant your item in the future. But you may end up with an impervious or a glamoured weapon or one that shines light or whatever, or one that's just a heck of a lot lighter. There's probably not a lot of reason not to roll on this table. Um, but of course, that's up to you. Um, and then if you want to make something out of a special material, I think there was a question out on the boards from Hugh about this uh, today as well. Um, again, go back to the crafting tables document, scroll down, and these are all the special materials that you can make something out of. Um, again, I'm planning to make a separate video to go into more detail about this, but at least this list is here for you to look at for now, and I'll talk a little bit more about how it all works when I make that video. Uh, if you need to repair an item, your skill can do that as well. That's straight out of Pathfinder. Um, t -t -t acquiring magical capital, we talked a little bit about that already, but um, you may just find it, especially in places where people were using magical capital, like in a temple or a wizard tower or something like that. You know, anytime you meet a uh, sort of a relevant NPC, uh, bad guy, there's a pretty good chance that they've got somebody crafting for them around, so you may find some magic capital there. Um, it can also be purchased during downtime. It can be uh, created when you destroy stuff with your enchanting skill. That's the de-arcanification we talked about. And if you use the survival skill on something that was identified with arcana, dungeon, or religion, then um, you might you know, carve out its magical eyes or its magical spleen and you can call that magical capital. Um, everybody needs to have their own personal five pound set of all purpose artisans tools. That'll be available out in uh, Fantasy Grounds. I don't care if you carry it, but somebody's gotta be carrying your tools to do all this crafting. You just have to have uh, the burden of carrying those tools around. Um, Wizards and alchemists get some bonuses uh, by default in Scribe Scroll and in uh, Brew Potion, and I've come up with a replacement for them uh, out here as well. There's also some, uh, what do you call them, archetypes for witches and druids and magus that, uh, that would kind of leverage the same rule here regarding Brew Potion. Um, feats don't have anything to do with the crafting process, is really all that note is about. Um, I've started a list of things that you can't craft, and those are also out on the message boards, and I'll probably maintain it on the message boards going forward. Um, there's a note here about me being more concerned about sort of balancing and having a, a, a working system than, than realism. And then lastly, there's an example here of um, me sort of breaking down the different ways that you might try to turn a plus one dagger into uh, other resources. So I've got a note here about what it costs to cast it, uh, create it in the first place, what you'd get for selling it to a vendor, um, what you'd get if you personally sold it using your downtime. Um, there'll be some downtime rules about this, but if you want to go out and find an individual buyer for a magic item, you can do that and you'll get basically 100% of the value out of it. You just can't do that more than once a 10 day or um, you basically become a, a merchant and you stop being an adventurer. Um, and then lastly, as we talked about before, you can get resources by just destroying the magic item with uh, 
with enchanting. So this is sort of a breakdown of how um, how worthwhile it might be to approach getting rid of a magic item in any of these different ways. It was mostly an exercise for me to make sure I couldn't find any giant loopholes in the system that would allow you to say craft items and then sell them and somehow that be what your character starts doing for a living rather than adventuring and trying to save the world. So that was a longer video than I planned, but I'm not really surprised. Um, I will have some more to fill in the blanks on some of these other things that we talked about, but for now we'll call that the end of this one. Thanks.